Let's try this again. We are live. All of a sudden the lighting looks better too. I wonder if I did something wrong the first time around. Nothing yet, Mom? No. I don't know what's going on, guys. Can you do me a favor and let me know? Yep, I've got somebody watching, so we must be live. Let me know when you're here, guys. We're having some technical difficulties this evening. Yep, I see some love. I think that's Melissa Durr. I recognize the picture. Yep, people are hopping on. Hey, Durr. Durr, give me some love here. Hi, Chard, I see your love. Is the lighting okay, guys? Give me some thumbs up, would you? If the lighting looks okay, I feel like we're having some technical difficulties here. Lisa Chart is watching. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Helen Leeds Hi. on. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I had started and uh, I don't think it was working, so we stopped and rebooted. And I hope the lighting's okay. It looks like I'm getting lots of love, so that's good. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Miranda. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am an Epicure consultant who's been at this since May. I've been a customer for over 10 years. I absolutely love our products. Um, and uh, I believe in the clean and healthy ingredients that our products offer. And so I made the decision in May to become a consultant. It's been absolutely amazing. I wanna thank you guys for joining. I am here every Wednesday at seven o'clock and uh, I look forward to sharing some recipes with you. Um, tonight, I've got a bit of a lineup, but I have a funny story about dessert. Oh boy, you guys, classic Midas. That's my last name, classic Midas, but I'm gonna save that, but it's a good one. It's a good one, oh my goodness. Anyways, I always like to start off with a toast, so we're gonna do that. I would like to toast all of you and welcome you this Wednesday. I would also like to uh, send out a special toast to Julie, who is hosting a party for my good friend, Lisa Chard. Julie, thank you so much for helping Lisa get her business going. I wanna thank all of you for being here with me. I see all the love, guys. Thank you, thank you. Also, thank you to Julie's family and friends for being a part of her party. And thank you, Lisa Chard, who is a colleague of mine, who's also become a good friend and has joined the Epicure, um, company with me. So it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome ride thus far. So cheers, everybody. Yum. Up. I'm going to wash my hands and be right back. All right. So lineup of food this evening, we have appetizer, an entree and a dessert. And I'm, I'm going to laugh every time until I get to the dessert. Cheers, Chard, I see your comment there. Cheers, everybody. Um, so I'm coming to you from my mom's kitchen. Um, people who come here on the regular will know this story, but those of you who have not been here before, um, this is my mom's beautiful kitchen. Mine is under a major, major kitchen renovation until February. <laughs> so thank you to my mom who always lets me use her beautiful kitchen to showcase um, this live demo every Wednesday. So I'm really lucky she has me here. Um, I do pay her in food. <laughs> That's her laughing. Anyways, I want to get started. So we have a good lineup of food going on tonight. So um, Epicure is a Canadian-based company. We come to you out of British Columbia, where uh, Sylvie and her daughter Amelia, our CEO, um, believe in healthy and clean ingredients. And we, we do a lot of... Um, uh, growing of our own raw ingredients and the raw ingredients that we don't have we source out in different places within the world and this pandemic has been amazing in terms of Epicure sales because so many of us are home cooking more than usual and so that is the silver lining of the pandemic I guess is that it's it's really helped Epicure um, continue to to offer all these beautiful ingredients um, but it's been also very neat for me, being a new consultant, to see the impact that some of these shortages globally have had in terms of just things that you wouldn't think about, So, or things I don't think about anyway. So things like our jars. Um, our jars are, um, are sourced from a certain place, and I can't tell you where specifically, but there was a global shortage, so they had to get new jars. And Epicure, being the company they are, did not rise prices when the jars that they found were actually bigger. So you ended up getting more product for the same price. I love that about this company. They're so giving. The other thing too is it always comes very full. Um, I've had this balsamic vinaigrette for quite some time. I use it a lot. 
um, and it's still like oh my goodness way like it's up here <laughs> well, um, but they come when you open the uh, jar brand new you really have to be careful because it's like uh, gold in there it comes flying out sometimes because the bottles are so full um, Epicure really is a company that, again, it's been part of my cooking for 10 years. I believe in the products. I've always enjoyed them. Um, so making the decision in May to, to become a consultant was a no-brainer for me, and it has been an amazing, amazing journey. I have met so many new people, um, whether they will be you know, customers who've become friends, um, uh, hosts who've become friends, other teammates who I've not met in person. It's all virtual at this point, but it's just been such an amazing ride. So it's been awesome, awesome. Um, I love, love, love showcasing um, our products in the way of a live demo. And so I, again, thank you for being here. We're going to start with an appetizer. We actually have two appies to do tonight. The first one I've already started to prep here. You'll see they are water chestnuts and I have wrapped them in a slice of bacon. It's basically bacon halved and halved again. So I guess that's a quarter slice of bacon. My math, right? Mm -hmm. A full yes, to a half a to a quarter. Look at me, guys. So it's that basically a quarter size bacon. Um, and then what you do is these are water chestnuts that I got in a can or in a uh, can, like almost looks like tuna. You wrap that up, um, and then the fold I usually do on the top and push the toothpick in so that it holds that bacon together. Um, I've gone ahead and done them ahead of time for time saving, basically, because nobody wants to sit here and watch me wrap water chestnuts let's be honest so these are going to go in on our sheet pan these are our quarter sheet pans i love these things we were actually talking about them today lisa chart and myself with another um, colleague and customer so there we go they're all on there okay our quarter sheet pans come in a two pack and then you get these silicone um sheets on top let me grab one to show you a little bit closer so this is our large size one, that's the sheet pan size. These are basically like reusable parchment paper. They literally, I don't even really do much cleaning of the pan itself because I lift it out of the pan and I throw it right into my dishwasher. It basically goes over the prongy things as like, like such and then it comes out super clean. These things are awesome, 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 I love them. And you'll see those um, throughout tonight quite a bit. So the other thing I'm going to do tonight, because we want these to crisp up, is our um, cooling racks come in a two-pack, but they're also used as a crisper. So rather than cooking it directly on the silicone, which I totally could, I know that this cooling rack will help to crisp these up, which is what you want. Nobody wants rubbery bacon. So we'll put these on top here, and then they're going to go into the oven... I've only set the oven at 350. Um, I don't quite know my mom's oven quite well enough, so I'm gonna put them in at 350 and keep an eye on them. So the, the um, cooling rack sits right inside of that quarter sheet pan like that, and we're gonna put those in the oven. The really cool thing about this is when they're done, I can just pull this cooling rack right out like this and serve it. I don't have to worry about anything because that grease is gonna fall right into the silicone pan. I'm going to take that out like this and put it in the dishwasher. And then this just gets a nice little wipe down. It always stays nice and shiny, good to go. Love these things. So, in they go. Water, chestnuts wrapped in bacon. Excuse my back. I am gonna set a timer. I set a timer because I'm just afraid of forgetting. <laughs> and it'll remind me to keep checking in on that. The next appetizer we're going to do is kind of neat. Um, I cannot remember where I saw this, but we're going to make a candy cane. Whoops. We're going to make a candy cane out of tomatoes and mozzarella cheese um, because it's festive. And we're going to drizzle it with some balsamic vinaigrette or glaze, depending on how thick you make it. So all I've done here is I've got some fresh basil that I've chopped the stems off of. I've got a ball of mozzarella that I've gone ahead and cut into slices. I did it a little thicker only because I really like mozzarella, but if you would prefer thinner, you certainly can. And then I've gone ahead and sliced up um, two tomatoes. So we're just going to lie these down and I'll show you as we go along here. You're gonna kind of layer them into the shape of a candy cane. I thought it was kind of festive and cute 
So why not, right? I am not a creative person. Um, I know a lot of people will say, oh, Miranda, you're so creative. I'm really not. I steal a lot from Pinterest. I never, I never claim that it's my own, but um, I really am not creative. So I love that Epicure allows me to seem like I'm creative <laughs> and uh, trick you guys, I guess. But it's so easy with Epicure because it's so versatile. And the, the other thing I really, really love about Epicure's products is it, they are versatile. So you always get instructions, obviously, on the jar, as you would on many. Um, so the balsamic, for example, it's a, vinegar, it's a balsamic vinaigrette dressing. Well, you don't have to only use it as a dressing. You could use that as a marinade. Um, I have gone ahead and made it in our cruette. Um, it's basically, you follow the recipes right on our cruette. I love these things. I made this a couple nights ago. This is probably one of my favorite dressings that we offer. It's, I don't know, it's got a really good tang to it. I love it. So this is um, pre-made already, and then I throw it right in the fridge and it stays in the jar already prepped. Um, but again, you can use it, I, we're gonna use it as a drizzle. So I don't know if you can see this without me sort of ruining it, but look at that, it's a cute little candy cane. And then the basil, you just kind of use to add a bit of color every so often and then we're going to drizzle it with balsamic like yummy and I thought it was cute because again it's heading into the holiday time and this is not my idea this was from Pinterest um, but I just think it's easy and cute and I love 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 the flavors of tomato mozzarella and balsamic um, it must be the Italian in me um, <laughs> yep. I have way more basil than I need, but that's okay because I will take that home and use it in something. That is for sure. Okay, there we go. So let's move this extra basil out of the way. Take a look at that, you guys. Now, I wouldn't necessarily serve it on this silicone. I mean, I certainly could, but look at that. Isn't that cute? Cute little candy cane. I'm trying not to make it fall. I'm making sure you guys can see it. Can you see that, Mom, on yeah. the screen? Yeah. Okay, so just like a cute little candy cane, <clears throat> mozzarella cheese and tomatoes, and then with the balsamic. So this balsamic is um, equal parts olive oil, and um, I used a white wine um, balsamic vinegar, and then I added about two tablespoons of the actual dressing. It is to die for. I absolutely love it. So give it a good, good shake. And then I think what I'll do is probably spoon it out because otherwise I'll make a disaster. So just put it on a spoon and just drizzle around some flavor. You could always add more later. The other thing you could do here is, I, I love this just on its own without anything, but you could certainly cut up some bread and have a, you know, a little bowl of bread beside it. Um, I, I would eat this just as it is. As I said, I love, love, love this stuff. This is like comfort food to me. There, so we've just drizzled. I'll likely put more on later, right before I serve it, but just for the purposes of seeing it, it's all drizzled up and good to go. Cute little holiday appetizer. At the end of my demos, I always will stop the video. Oh, I see some hearts. Thanks guys. <laughs> I'll stop the video and then I do um, a quick little uh, final product video and I will post it. So I will make sure that Lisa posts that on her page for Julie's party, but it'll also be here on my business page and my VIP page for my customers that are watching. And uh, I think the final products always is important for you to see because as we're cooking it is one thing, but to see the final products up close, I think is pretty telling. So I'm not going to lie. I think that's super, super cute. Um, I would probably put it maybe on a, on a white dish just to make it pop a little bit more. But in, in terms of, you know, putting it together, it was quite easy on the sheet pan. Um, and we're good to go. So let's do what's next. Let me check. Oh, yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. How are we out there, guys? We're doing good? Cheers. You guys out there? Are you there? Anybody? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so the other thing we're going to make is um, I thought we would make some garlic aioli or roasted garlic, garlic aioli sauce for the um, water chestnuts. I just thought it might be nice to have a little option to dip it. And 
Um, another option is we have a smoky moho flavoring, but it's only available in the summer. And I don't like showcasing things that are available to you now because then people go, oh, I want that and it's not available. But come summertime, our smoky moho um, is really good as a rimmer on like a Caesar. If you drink Caesars and things like that, that would have been a good option. Uh, our Chipotle, which is available, might have been a good option. I was just worried about too much spice. So I chose to go with the roasted garlic aioli. In here, I have basically half a cup of mayonnaise. You don't wanna use Miracle Whip. I am not downing Miracle Whip. I actually prefer that on a sandwich to real mayonnaise. However, with our dip mixes, the sugar content, it's too sweet and it throws the flavor. So always use real mayo. I am going to throw in there a tablespoon. Uh, that's a lot. Half a tablespoon, pardon me. Half a tablespoon of the roasted garlic goes right in there. This is our four in one um, spoon, measuring spoon. It is amazing. You can survive without one of these in your kitchen, no question about it, but it's so helpful to have, especially with our products. You'll see it falls right into the jar with no problem. Gone are the days where I would fight to get the product because my spoon wouldn't fit and I'd end up wasting product. This goes right in. And then you also have the measurement of a tablespoon, half a tablespoon and a full, or sorry, a half a teaspoon and a full teaspoon. It's awesome. I love this thing. And it's a nice price point. I think it's at $6. So it's an easy add to your cart and you won't be, um, you won't be sad that you have one. I actually have a couple of them now. So in, in here is half a cup of mayonnaise, a half a tablespoon of our roasted aioli. It is going to be prepped into our one cup prep bowl. These things are awesome. They come in a four pack. I might be obsessed. I think I own 16 of these now. I use them all the time. They're amazing for my demo because I can put them all my ingredients in different ones. Um, but these things are super, super helpful. So they come in a four pack. The nice thing is you can measure right within it. It's a full cup, right to the top is a full cup. So you can mix whatever you want in the bowl. It comes with a nice silicone lid that seals on there quite good. You can refrigerate it, right? So to cool it and then serve it right in the bowl. Saving dishes and that is cool for me. I hate doing dishes. So we're gonna give that a mix. These sauces in a, in a restaurant, um, usually will come at an extra price. Anytime you hear aioli or things like that, there's always an extra price. I love, again, making this ahead of time at home. This will be way more than we need as a dip for these. So what I will do is then go home and um, again, put the lid on and keep it in the fridge. And I now have roasted aioli mix already mixed up, ready to use in whatever. So we would use that as a nice garnish on a sandwich. You could dip French fries, um, all kinds of options. Like we are a family that loves sauces and dips and things like that. So <laughs> Epicure is a good fit for us. But anyways, that smells delicious already. It's got a beautiful roasted garlic type flavor. I am gonna throw it in the fridge because it is mayonnaise and I'll pop it out when we need it again. But that's super easy, half a cup of mayonnaise, and half a tablespoon of the roasted aioli, done. Delicious. The other thing to keep in mind too, is I went light on the garlic, I can always add more. So if I try it when it's time to eat and I'm finding it doesn't have enough flavor, I'll just add more, easy peasy, right? You can always add more, you just can't take away. All right, so let's get on to our entree. For our entree, we, are going to make some flavors brought to you by the one of the original G's, <laughs> our Mexican kit. So we have some kits available. The Mexican kit, the Greek kit, and the Asian kit right now are available. They are an amazing way to start with Epicure. Now having said that, it doesn't come with the box anymore. There's a shortage of boxes, thank you COVID. But you do get four products in this kit. The Poco Picante, which we're gonna to use tonight. The guacamole, which we're gonna to use tonight. The fajita, which we already have used and we'll talk about. And the nacho cheese, which I've already used and talked about to make several recipes. This kit also comes with five recipe cards and a shopping list. So I just forgot to put it in here when I came here this evening. Um, look at that, just opening that box got me to my 10,000 steps. Thank you, Mexican kit. 
Okay. <laughs> so um, what I'm gonna do with this, so like I was saying, it's a good way to start if you're just new to Epicure and you're not quite sure, but you know that your family enjoys you know, a Mexican type flavor or a Greek flavor, whatever, you can start with these as a, as a starting point. Um, they make over 35 to 40 meals. And many of the times the meals are costing less than $3. So it's very affordable. Um, okay, so this kit here, what I've done is I have already browned some ground uh, beef just to save time. And uh, in there, I threw our fajita and our nacho cheese. So the nacho cheese has a bit of a Tex-Mex type flavor. So you could add that to just shredded cheese if you wanted for nachos or whatever. I added it to this ground beef. In the ground beef, again, all it is is about a pound and a half of ground beef, browned with, again, a tablespoon of fajita and a tablespoon of the nacho. And I've just browned it to the point of being ready and I chopped up a red pepper and that's in there as well. One of the things I wanna highlight to you guys, I like highlighting some tools that make life easier, is the meat separator. This tool is amazing. I don't know how I ever lived without this. I do not like touching raw meat. It makes my stomach turn. Um, especially since having my kids who are going to be 19 next month. I have twins and I do not like it. I never have. This baby does the work for me. So you put it in the frying pan and you just kind of do your thing. This does the work. I don't have to touch it at all. It is awesome. It's also very good when you're baking. Um, what else can you use this for? It's really good at hitting your kids. No, I'm kidding. Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, it's just a really good tool to have because again, it just, it does the work for you. If you're making your homemade hamburgers, that to me is the worst. Um, I love them, but making them and having to touch that egg and all that goopy goop just really is not my thing. So this meat separator, I highly, highly recommend you get one. Um, it is very, very helpful in the kitchen. So I used that when I cooked up this ground meat. So that was the fajita and the nacho from the kit. So that's 50% of the kit I've already used. What we're gonna do is I have some pitas here and we are going to make and bake some, I guess, beef burritos we could call them. And so I'm going to line these with the meat and the pepper. You could also use ground chicken. I was going to do that, except that I'd already pulled out this ground beef and I didn't want to waste it. So I really like ground chicken as an alternative. Um, you could do turkey if you like ground turkey. I'm not as fussy of ground turkey as I am with chicken. I really do like the chicken better. So we're basically lining these. You could have, you could throw some chopped onions in this. If, if I didn't have any, so I didn't use it. Um, but it's just kind of like, almost like a taco almost, right? So we put them all into those wraps there. I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese, but not a lot because I'm gonna to top them with cheese, but you can never have too much cheese. So we'll do that. There we go. And then we're gonna fold these up in a manner on this sheet pan where they're gonna crisp up on us. So how did I do this before? Nope, that's not it. So in half, and then the corners, and then we just flip them over and they should hold. So it's a nice little meat package there. Oh, I shouldn't say meat package, that sounds wrong. I always say something on these shows that could be misunderstood as something else, and that will be tonight's, I guarantee it. Meat is made, these little meat packages. Hmm. All right. I never promised to be a kid's show, but I love the kids that do watch me. I know there's a lot of them out there and I love, love, love it. I can't wait till I can have some of the kids out there that watch with their parents on with me. Because another good thing about Epicure is that we love, love, love when kids can cook. I've enjoyed cooking since I was little. My mom, um, when I, well, I always enjoyed it, but when I was about, I don't know, 13, would you say, mom, you could call home and I'd make dinner? Oh yeah. My mom and dad owned a sports store and so they worked long hours. And so I would often get a call that would say, can you make something for dinner? And I would do it, because I loved it. I just have always enjoyed cooking. I work full time as a child and youth worker, and I love my job, I do. Um, but if there were another job that I could do and know that I would enjoy would be cooking. I just love it, love it that much. Having said that, right now is a bit of a drag because I don't have a kitchen. <laughs> and I'm also battling a back injury, so being on my feet is hard. <laughs> 
but uh, I'm still enjoying it, that is for sure. So there we go. All right, those are all put together there. I'm going to drizzle cheese on top of it so that that cooks up nicely. And then we're gonna pop those in the oven with the um, water chestnuts. I did not evenly add that. Okay, we're gonna pop those into the oven, let those crisp up, and we're gonna move on to the other 50% of that Mexican kit. Just excuse my back for one second here, guys. I just gotta turn these. They are looking delicious. Perfect, it already smells delicious in here because of that bacon. Then the nice thing is you always have leftovers, right? So you can make more. You could throw that on a salad, do whatever you wanted. You could even, I don't know, fry up like a scrambled egg and throw that in there, it'd be yummy, yummy. So this bowl here is similar to the one cup, except it's our four cup. And this thing is awesome too, because you, it's big enough, four cups. You can make like a burrito bowl or a salad or whatever. Um, it's awesome, again, four cups, same lid, same idea. You can prep in this, you can chill it, and then serve it in, oh, I'm having a really hard time here with this. And then you can serve it right in that same bowl. I love these things. So that's the four cup one. All right. So who eats burritos without guacamole? Ah, uh, nobody. I love guacamole. Like I just, I can't tell you how much I love guacamole. I am a huge fan. My daughter Savannah has gone ahead and um, cut up and mashed a couple of avocados. That's all that's in here. Nothing else has been done. It's literally, come on in, it's all good. It's just two avocados, ripe avocados that she has taken out the pit and we have mashed up, okay? So that's all that's in there. What I love about our guacamole is again, it's clean and healthy, but it's literally guacamole, the um, guacamole, the avocados and our mix. We're gonna squeeze some fresh lemon. Oh, that's lime, fresh lime and fresh lemon. That's it. I don't have to add sour cream. I don't have to add chopped up tomatoes. I don't have to add onion. The flavor comes right from our seasoning. It is amazing. One of our most popular products. You can make it with sour cream and make a creamy version of it. I prefer it just as is. The ingredients in here to give you a sense of clean and healthy. Onion, sea salt, red bell pepper, garlic, herbs, and chilies. Like I know what all, is that, all of that is. I know it, I can pronounce it. I'm not putting anything into my food that I don't know what, I, I don't know what it is, right? So our guacamole, one tablespoon. I'm always really heavy on the mix because I love the flavoring. Again, you can adjust as you want. So that's two ripe avocados and a tablespoon of the, the seasoning. It smells so good. And then we are going to squeeze some fresh lemon and fresh lime into there. So I think the bottle actually, or the jar only calls for lime, I believe, a splash of lime, but I like lime and lemon, so I do both. Our citrus press is a workhorse. Strong steel, it's a two-in-one because we can do a lemon and a lime at the same time, in the same tool, love it. So half a lime, your peel goes up, facing up, and you'll see that fresh lime juice come out. It's so yummy, yo oh my goodness. And the really nice thing about this is it almost introverts it so you know you've gotten everything except the, um, the pit and the peel. <laughs> so that was the lime, and now we're gonna do the same thing with the lemon, one tool, okay? So we've got the peel facing up, same thing. Yummy. Done. And we know we got everything but the, the pits and the peel. My mom's microwave is not patient, excuse me. So we're gonna put that on some more timer. And start. So it's already been in there 20 minutes. I put it on for another 10 minutes because we want those good and crispy. There we go, you guys. So we mix that up. And that is it for the guacamole. Simple as that. It is, like I'm telling you, it's my favorite. And I know many people out there who do not know me might think, well, yeah, you like everything, you sell it. I don't like all of our products. I like 99% of them. 
Um, but the guacamole, I can tell you 100% is probably one of my favorite dips. It is delicious. Done, good to go. We will use that as a side to our burritos coming out. Now, poco picante, let's talk about that. So we've used the guacamole, the nacho, the fajita, that leaves us with the, with the poco picante. This is probably my mom's favorite product. She loves this. She puts this deep on everything. It's meant to go in chopped tomatoes and make sort of a fresh salsa. So I've gone ahead and chopped up some tomatoes already. And we are going to add the poco picante directly to that. So again, I'm going to do probably half a tablespoon because it's about three quarter tablespoon, yes. Um, it's about a three quarter cup of tomatoes. I didn't have a lot of them, but what I do have is here. We're gonna mix that in. You could add some olive oil. I won't, only because um, I just don't think it needs it. There's gonna be a lot of flavors with the guacamole already. So that's it, you guys. The poco picante is the flavor is um it's so yummy let's see here where's my onion sea salt garlic chili spices cayenne pepper jalapeno and chives it's got a bit of a bite so you don't want to go heavy on it you want to get to you know get used to the flavors first again you can always add you can't take away it is very good on fresh tomatoes as i've done here it's also very good on um eggs um, it's very good on meats. You can use it on meat to add some flavor. I've even added it to chilies before to add a bit of a bite. So a bowl of chili. Um, it's a really, really good flavor. It's got a spice. It's not like kill you, like rip your face off hot, but it's, it's definitely got a bit of a bite to it. That was the entire Mexican kit that we've used to prepare this meal, okay? So this one here, you can, but also if you're thinking, yeah, I would use maybe two, not the other two, these products are all available individually. But if you're someone like us, as my family, we use a lot of these products, the kit is always the way to go. And again, it does come with um, five recipe cards. So that's our Mexican kit. And there's our Poco Picante, good to go. Yummy. That's gonna be delicious with our guacamole. How are we doing out there, people? Let's see some love. Let's see some hearts if you're enjoying yourselves. If you're not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope you're enjoying it so far. So we're gonna be moving on. Oh, look at all those hearts. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you all. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna move on to dessert. And I'm already laughing. Oh my goodness, look at all those hearts. Thanks guys, one, one, one. I need a drink, cheers. Okay, <laughs> let's talk dessert. So, I have been super excited to do this recipe in what I call the bomb.com. You're not gonna find this called the bomb.com in, in the microwave, in the catalog. It's our multi-purpose steamer. This steamer is literally the bomb.com. I don't know how else to say it. Um, I've had it since May when I became a consultant. It's probably one of the products cooking wise that has changed my cooking since I've become a consultant. Things are just a lot easier. I use it a lot. Um, it is basically, it's a steamer and it comes with three pieces. You get the lid with three divot holes for the steam to exit. So this steams our food and it basically traps all the moisture in there so that your food is always going to be um, juicy and not dry or things like that. So the lid comes with three little divot holes. Make sure it's always pointing away from you. It comes with a tray that sits inside, not for all recipes, but for lots. Um, for example, we could chop up bacon and put that on there and make our own homemade bacon chips or pit, uh, bacon bits. You can do strips of bacon. You could alternatively cut up these. Um, if you didn't want to make them into a burrito, you could burrito you could chop those up into basically triangles or whatever shape you wanted put them on the tray and nuke them actually i'll do that real quick you guys can see this it's an easy demonstration another reason why this multi-purpose steamer is the bomb.com so that's one of the pitas we use for the burritos i'm going to cut it up you can do whatever shape you want i'm not very precise here but anyways 
So we've chopped that up. We're going to put it on the tray and we're going to throw these in the microwave for two minutes. That's it. Okay, there we go. We're going to make some homemade pita chips. Super easy. Another alternative for that leftover meat or if somebody just wants some pita chips with guacamole. Okay, two minutes in the microwave. And then the third part is your actual multi-purpose steamer, the actual steamer, okay? So that's the steamer. It is so versatile. It does things from um, your grains, so like quinoa and rice, to meats. You can do ground meat in there. You can do a, a whole chicken in there. Um, you can do desserts in here. You can do popcorn. It actually comes with a little recipe card that gives you a guide for cooking time. So it's really, really awesome that it comes with that because it gives you an idea. Um, right now, so this bad boy sells for $51.95, but right now in the catalog is something called the Steamy Collection. And for two extra dollars, so for $53.95, you get three meal solutions added. So it's a no-brainer. If you're looking to invest in one of these, do the Steamy Collection because you're getting three meal solutions that would normally cost you over $10 for $2. And it's a nice way to try different things out. So tonight, we're making Rice crispy Squares. Here's the funny part. So, you know all this fun Christmas stuff that comes out this time of year? I quickly saw this and went, oh, fun Rice Krispies. I'm gonna make Rice Krispie squares in the steamer. Yep, that was the plan. Up until about five minutes before I hit start on the show, I thought we were making that. Can you guys see these? They're stars. They're not Rice Krispie squares at all. Or Rice Krispies. They're like stars. I don't even know if you can see them. They're not small, but I'm gonna do it anyways because that's how I roll. I always told myself that, I, I probably shouldn't put those back in there. I always told myself I'm gonna be authentic and real and this is as real as she gets. I messed up, people. I mess up all the time. This is not Rice Krispies but we're gonna make Rice Krispie squares regardless. So these are gonna be called Holiday Cereal Vanilla Flavored, The Elf on the Shelf, A Christmas Tradition, Something Squares in the Multipurpose Steamer. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna go with it because I'm already set up. I didn't have time to run out and fix this mess, so we're going with it. And that's as authentic and real as I get. Let me get the pita chips. All that in a mouthful. All that in a mouthful. Look at this, you guys, pita chips done. Two minutes, can you hear that? It's like a musical instrument, done. They actually, in some ways, overcooked a little bit, some of them, now, I don't mind them extra crispy, but that's two minutes on that tray, done. If you go to a grocery store and you buy a bag of those, you're well over three, four dollars. And I don't know about you guys, but I can eat a whole bag myself. So to be able to buy these on sale, now I happened to get the old El Paso today just because I was in that aisle and it was a quick grab. I rarely buy these ones. I usually buy the no-name ones, but they go on sale for 99 cents and I stock up. And that's why, because when you are doing dips and heading into a holiday season, you can make your own in two minutes. Done. So easy. All right. Pray for me in this dessert. So in here is I followed the recipe as if I were making Rice crispy Squares. So there is a bag of little marshmallows and a quarter cup of butter chopped up. I am to put the lid on for one minute and put it in the microwave. Can everybody out there please do this for me right now? Cross your fingers and your toes. Here we go. I need good vibes. I've never done this before. Here we go, one minute in the microwave. The peanut gallery over here has their fingers crossed and they're doing like a, like they're at a concert. I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the lighter to come up. All right. Oh, dear. Ooh, we're crisping up good. Oh, there we go. She's got her cell phone on. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know, you guys. My fingers are crossed. So I'm not even going to add vanilla extract. Oh, that's her microwave. Good grief. Excuse me. Or not her microwave. Her, um... My mom's oven. Like, my mom's appliances are very rude. Um, I'm not putting vanilla extract in as you normally would because there's actually bits of vanilla um, flavoring in this. I don't know, what do you call it? Like a, what would you call this? An, a, um, an imposter cereal? Like who makes 
Elf on the Shelf cereal. I don't know. I guess Kellogg's. Lots of Kellogg's. Thank you, Kellogg's. It's. I'm sure lots of kids like this, but my kids are going to be 19. I've, I've been out of that jam for a while. Okay, eight seconds left. We got those marshmallows and butter in there. Let's take a look. Four, three, two, one. I need a drink. Cool. Nothing's caught on fire. Thank God. I know. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Not yet. I'm going to do another minute. It's not quite melted yet. The butter's starting. So that's two minutes in the microwave. I'm going to grab a dish for those pitas. Let's see here. So we have um, a shopping deadline of December 13th for Epicure. If you're someone who is looking to get products in for Christmas, your deadline will be the 13th. So please, please, please reach out if you need anything. If you're following Julie's party, please make sure that you get those orders in. Again, um, the cutoff is the uh, 13th to guarantee delivery for Christmas, which is a lot better than what we, a lot better than what we initially thought with the, with COVID and everything, we were anticipating a, uh, a bit of a problem. There was a time back in May when I joined where customers were waiting up to eight weeks for products to be delivered. Long waits. Um, partially was because we were out of products. The pandemic again helped Epicure's business boom, um, but also because of uh, deliveries, right? Things were just so off. But I'm proud to say that orders are arriving within seven to 10 days now, so we're good. Oh my goodness, look at that, you guys, it worked. So, the marshmallows and the butter has mixed up, melted. We're gonna give that a stir, and we are gonna throw in our Rice crispy Imposter Cereal Stars. God help us. Because here's the thing, it'll be fine, except that I want it to be cute and cut them into gingerbread men, and I'm not sure it's gonna work with these stars. Let's see. I'm not a baker. I'll be honest, I don't bake. It's too precise, I don't have the patience. Here we go. So we are mixing in the cereal. Ooh, it's gonna be ooey gooey delicious. Smells good. My husband and daughter love Rice Krispie Squares. My son does not, Bryson is not a fan. But uh, I like them. I wouldn't say they're my most favorite dessert in the world. Um, nor are Red Smarties. <laughs> Anyways. Um, here we go. Add a little bit more. We want this to thicken. But I don't mind a good Rice Krispie Square. But if I'm going to have one, I want it to be um, like gooey. I don't want dry. Oh, people are laughing at the, right, at the Smarties, Lena. That's an inside joke. My mom really likes Smarties. I love Smarties. And so Smarties, if you're out there, if you could send my mom some red Smarties, she would certainly oh, yeah. be happy. Oh, yeah. If you could do that, please. So, you can just send me rum chata. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're getting there. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to make gingerbread under the, out of these because they just won't... They're not gonna cut proper, right? However, look at that. It actually, so if these were Rice Krispies, they, it would have worked really well. I gotta say, I'm quite impressed. Check that out, you guys. So the cereal's obviously my bad because I bought the wrong ones, but literally, what was that? Under, like that was two minutes, those marshmallows um, melted with the butter, and then you add your Rice Krispies. What I was gonna actually do was empty it onto our cutting mats. And you know what? What have I got to lose? Let's try it. Let's do it. I'm gonna do what I was gonna do. Here we go. Why not? So let's flatten this out. And my plan was to cut out gingerbread men. So maybe what I'll do is I'll let that cool in the fridge a little bit 
and then see in the final demo if it works. So if you see them in the final demo, it'll make you guys come back and watch that or just see that little clip at the end of the final demo. I'll see if it works. But look at that, you guys. That would have been really good Rice Krispie squares had I chosen the right ones. So I'm gonna throw that in the fridge, get those to cool down a little bit and see if it'll cut out for me. Excuse my back. All right, so there we go. Not bad at all. That steamer, I'm telling you, it is amazing. Amazing. I don't know how I ever survived before. Um, to be honest, when I first started as an Epicure consultant, I remember somebody saying, you can do fajitas in there. And I was like, oh, okay. And they said, you put the chicken in the bottom, so you chop up the chicken, do your onions and your peppers. I put those on top of the tray, the chicken down below, put that on top and in the microwave. <laughs> for six minutes and I was like, that just sounds like it's gonna come out rubbery. Microwave meat to me does not sound appealing. I gotta say, I was completely blown away. It comes out super moist. Oh, I said it. <laughs> I meant juicy, <laughs> not dry. <laughs> um, it's delicious, it works out and it's all done. Because it's a steamer, the, the veggies still are crispy. Um, they're, they're not mushy um, because they've been steamed from the heat and it's done. I think I went with eight minutes total, so it was six minutes, and then I added two more minutes because I was a little nervous with chicken. Done, dinner was served. And the nice thing is a lot of our recipes, dinner is to the table in under 20 minutes. Like that's awesome, right? I think, anyways. So, where are we at? Let's check out these. Oh my goodness. We are looking really good. So I have to do a bit of a housekeeping matter. Um, and then we will pull out that food in the oven and we will do our final goodbye. How are we doing for time? Wow, we're doing good everybody. So my customers um, have taken part in what's called 12 days of giving. Um, so I had um, 50 candies up for grab for $5 and it basically got them a number. And for the first 12 days of December, I'm giving away a prize. And I said that I would do it tonight on my live. Tonight's prize is the four cup prep bowl. So somebody is going to win the four cup prep bowl minus the meat. <laughs> Yours is brand new in a box. So there we go. That's what I'm going to be raffling off tonight. I have the remaining ballots. This is our uh, collapsible strainer. This thing's super helpful. Um, it, it's awesome. <laughs> I really like it. So all of our silicone, not sure if I've mentioned this, um, all of our silicone products are safe in the oven up to 425, safe in the microwave, and also safe in a dishwasher lower rack. So it's food grade silicone. I just, I love our products when it comes to the silicone. Okay, good luck all my customers. Here we go. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. The winner is number, ooh, my favorite number, number 15. Number 15, and that person is Lindsay Dolson. Congratulations, Lindsay. You won yourself the four cup prep bowl, girl. I don't know if you're on here, but I will reach out to you. I actually have um, a big box of your orders. <laughs> We're waiting on one more, so it'll be easy for me to throw that in there. Congratulations, Lindsay Dolson. I will be doing the next draw tomorrow, which would be day 10. Whew. Day 10, everybody. All right, let's pull this food out and take a look at what we got. Yeah, that looks good. Wow, serves you guys. So, there's our burritos. Again, there'll be a final product that I'll show or our final demo. And our water chestnuts wrapped, whoops, came off here, in bacon. Done. Look at those. I don't want to burn my finger, but there's Grease that fell right through those cooling racks onto our silicone. Um, I don't want to burn anything here, including my hands. But eventually that will pop out, that cooling rack will pop right out, and they can be served right on there. Delicious. Let's move this onto the stove so I, again I don't burn anything. Hit stop. There you go, you guys. Good grief. That was a full menu. Last week I went overtime. This week I'm under. 
I usually I usually do about an hour so this was fun I had a lot of fun tonight and I didn't think about my painful back once so that was cool um, so again as I finish here I will prep it and take a final little video of the final products I will make sure that Lisa posts that on Julie's page I will make sure that it goes on my business page and on my VIP page so that you guys can see that we've done a full lineup let's go over it starting with our candy cane mozzarella and tomato and basil drizzled with our balsamic vinaigrette in a cute little candy cane um, design moving on to our water chestnuts wrapped in bacon and baked on our cooling rack as a crisper inside of our quarter sheet pan we've also made a uh -huh, reminder fresh garlic aioli oh my goodness that smells good so that is brought to you by the roasted garlic delicious mixed up that'll be a nice little dip for those water chestnuts then we went on to our entree where we made baked burritos which are stuffed with our ground beef and peppers brought to you by the mexican kit the fajita and the taco mix um, and then we made a fresh poco picante salsa with our poco picante mix and my fave our, gar our, our guacamole and my goodness that's going to be yummy yummy we were able to um, in two minutes make some homemade pita chips so that if you're not super hungry and don't want the whole burrito you can have yourself some chips instead with some of those dips and finally the rice crispy dessert the imposter brought to you by elf on the shelf and Kellogg's we'll see how that turns out I'm sure the taste will be there just not what I was planning but anyways we went with it and we still made it happen in the steamer who knew that in two minutes you could melt a whole bag of marshmallows and a quarter cup of butter so that you could make Rice Krispie squares I think that is awesome so you guys this full menu is brought to you <laughs> in way under an hour I've done a whole lot of talking because I do like to showcase a lot of the products I sure hope you enjoyed yourselves I want to thank you for joining me Julie once again thank you to you and your family and friends for supporting my good friend Lisa Chard um, I do appreciate that anybody who's looking to book a party please consider doing that you may not be thinking for December because Christmas is busy there is still time however come January Lisa myself or any other consultant for that matter would love 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 to host a party for you and if you book a party so if someone at Julie's party books a party it's a win-win-win the first win is you as the person hosting is going to earn yourself some free product and our hostesses are well are very well treated with free product and discounts so that's the first win the second win is that Julie as the host is going to earn herself a half price item the third win is the consultant gets to share our business and our passion of cooking with Epicure with new people it is virtual we do all the work you do not have to do anything but invite your family and friends to a Facebook page that we create and then sit back at the end of the party you get to shop um, and use your freebies your rewards as well as your half price item now is the time to host we are looking to book come January as there is a new catalog launching um, mid-January so we would love 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 to host a part um, to have a party for you and share this with your family and friends and get you some rewards so reach out to us if you're interested I know Julie would certainly love that half price item so if anybody's out there willing to um, help Julie and Lisa chart out please please book a party you can do so up to three months in advance so that's kind of nice too failing that you guys if you think that this is something you're interested in and want to join us on our team reach out to us we have so much fun and it's all virtual imagine what trouble we're gonna get into when we can actually get together and touch each other and stuff oh my god anyways I want to thank you so much again for joining it has been a pleasure I am here every Wednesday at 7 I have not decided if I will be here next Wednesday probably um, I'll probably do one more demo next Wednesday um, but anyways I want to thank you for being here um, stay healthy and stay safe I know that holidays are going to be a little bit different this year but do enjoy yourselves and uh, maybe make some new traditions my son comes home from university tomorrow and so having all of us under the same roof for just under a month is going to be really super cool I plan on uh, snuggling him a lot as much as he'll let me he's 19 and he's huge um, so he doesn't snuggle a lot but I'm gonna certainly try um, we're gonna play a lot of family board games and all that fun stuff so just have yourselves a great holiday even though it's different vaccines coming and I sure hope we're on the other side of this horrible virus so Cheers to all of you. Thank you so much.
I want to thank my mom again for having me. Um, I don't know what I would do without her and her kitchen. And uh, yeah, so normally I would end saying from my kitchen to yours, thank you, but I'm not in my kitchen. So I'll tell you from my mom's kitchen, but my heart, thank you so much for joining you guys. Have a fantastic night. Take care. Bye-bye. Look forward to or stay tuned for the final, the final demo. Take care.